On today's show, Continental develops a new brake for electric vehicles, the Ford F-150 gets powertrain upgrades, and the steel industry develops a new type of high-strength steel that's cheaper and less energy intensive to make. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Automakers and suppliers are coming up with unique ways to improve vehicle efficiency, and here's something that caught our eye. The supplier Mali and Tata Motors, the parent company of Jaguar Land Rover, have developed a secondary loop AC system. It still uses most of a traditional AC setup, but the refrigerant lines never cross over into the cabin of the vehicle. Rather, they go into a heat exchanger where the refrigerant both cools and removes heat from a special type of secondary fluid or coolant. That coolant is then pumped into the cabin to cool the air. And because the coolant stays cooler longer than a refrigerant, the compressor can be off for longer periods of time. Tata and Mali expect fuel savings of up to 3%, even though the entire AC system will be heavier overall. Another added benefit is that different refrigerants can be used that are slightly more flammable, but have significantly lower global warming potential. The big question is, can they make it cost effective to produce and maintain? Well, Tata will begin testing the system soon in India, where it's set to get very hot and humid. Perfect for testing AC. And speaking of unique concepts, Continental developed a creative wheel and brake assembly meant for electric vehicles. The new wheel concept, as it's called, consists of several parts, an aluminum star and small caliper that bolt directly to the axle hub, and an outer rim and large aluminum brake rotor that bolt to the star. As you can see, rather than clamping onto the outside of the rotor, the caliper clamps on the inside. And due to the large size of the rotor, much less clamping force is needed to provide a high level of braking, which is why the caliper is so small. And because it's aluminum, the rotor doesn't wear or corrode like a steel rotor and dissipates heat much faster. Continental says the rotor could last the lifetime of the vehicle. Other benefits include easy to change brake pads, lighter overall weight, and quieter braking because most of the force is sent into the axle hub. We'll be back with more right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. With new advanced materials, such as aluminum or carbon fiber becoming more popular with automakers, the steel industry must advance quickly. Sure, they have ultra high strength steel, but it's so strong, it must be heated red hot to soften it up to be stamped. That adds time and cost and uses more energy. Now the Auto Steel Partnership believes it's found a fix. They call it Gen 3 Advanced High Strength Steel, or AHSS, and it can be cold stamped and produced at a lower cost while keeping the same strength as the latest steel grades. Using computer simulation, they created a model of a new crystalline structure for steel. More simulation and testing showed it could be cold stamped, and now it's ready for production. The invention process took four years and cost them eight and a half million dollars, six million of which came from the U.S. Department of Energy. Last year, Tesla revealed it's developing an electric semi-truck, which will be revealed next month. And now Reuters reports that the truck will have autonomous capabilities. The trucks will move in platoons, meaning they can follow a lead vehicle automatically. Tesla is currently in talks with California and Nevada about testing the truck on public roads. The 2018 Ford F-150 is getting updated powertrains that will be more efficient and powerful. On the fuel efficient front, the 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6, made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission, will get 26 miles to the gallon on the highway in 20 city. That's one MPG more than the 2017. It also has received a 25 pound foot bump in torque. 
Other noteworthy improvements include a 3,270-pound payload capacity for the 5-liter V8 and a 13,200-pound towing capacity for the 3.5-liter EcoBoost V6. Ford credits its new dual port and direct injection system for these power and efficiency bumps. The 2018 F-150 will be available this fall. Coming up next, Mazda has some advice for California regarding future vehicle regulations. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Earlier this week, we reported about California wanting to impose stricter fuel economy and emission regulations beyond 2025. Presumably, this will mean more emphasis on battery electric and fuel cell technology. So how will this impact a company like Mazda, which doesn't have any electrified vehicles in its lineup and is openly talking about extending the life of the internal combustion engine? Well, on last week's AutoLine After Hours, we were joined by Robert Davis, the senior vice president from Mazda North America. Here's what he had to say about California's environmental goals. I think the customer acceptance of uh, the California policy right now is, uh, is our biggest concern because the business is not robust around the uh, supported vehicles in, in BEV. And also a, a battery electric vehicle, let's, let's face it, it's not a zero emissions vehicle, it's a remote emissions or a displaced emissions vehicle. So is truly the uh, force, the force the consumer to go toward the, the battery electric vehicle, is that the best thing for the environment? Mm -hmm. There's a couple of cases that were, were shown by us and shown by ExxonMobil today that, that maybe that's not the ploy to go. In what way? Well, and understanding that if uh, transportation is gonna have a, a larger share of energy consumption, that maybe decommissioning some of the existing energy plants is a better option than using that extra energy for cars. So I think we're calling to look at it on a bigger basis, have a wider view, and have the environment as the end game. So whether it's transportation or electric, electricity generation, we need to understand the whole picture. California is lucky, they got a great supply of, of, of energy, um, but we're here in the Midwest. The Midwest is much more focused on coal, oil, natural gas than California. So that balance is, is a little bit different by region. You can watch that entire show right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. And just a reminder that there will not be a new Autoline After Hours this afternoon. However, John and Gary will be back next week discussing the latest news in the automotive industry. Well, that is it for today. Thank you for making Autoline Daily a part of your day.